Right, so now it is it is officially recording. Again, just to point out, any comments that I made, the uh, system cannot see it. Uh, so you're not being recorded for any comments that you're making, so please don't feel like it's something to um, that you're going to be like completely compromised. Right. Um, yesterday, what I was doing is I was going through what is a spring washer. Now, these are the old ones I was doing. So what I did is if I have on Blackboard is I've uploaded last yesterday's session. So what I'll do is just log on to my module material and go into live sessions. Well, well, no, 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 that's wrong one, wrong one. That, not a good start, just saying. Not into live session because that's a URL link. So, wait, ah, there it is. Right, see here, we've got spring washer. Now what I've done is um, I've uploaded that code. If you are keen, because you should be keen because it's awesome. If you are keen to actually um, see the whole backing of how we did it and the processes that we went through, Spring Washer uh, Session 1 was yesterday, and you can look, download that, and it takes you through step-by-step step exactly how we did it. One thing I do want to point out as well, as we're going through, I'm going to be using the notes, all the sets of notes that we've used. I'm going to be using as much tools as possible. One second, someone's logging in. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to be using as many tools as possible to allow me to, uh, well, I mean, I'm going to be using as many tools that we've done in the notes. So what I'll do is I'm going to download the code. So I'll left click, and obviously it downloads. To let you know, I've actually seven zipped it together. So uh, I know a lot of people feel like I'm being patronizing. It's only because not everybody knows how to do this. If you look onto um, Split Washer, I'm going to right click, go to 7-Zip, Open Archive. And what you'll get is this. Got the Spring Washer. Oh, I've called it Split Washer. That's really awkward. It, sh it should be Spring Washer. So I'm just going to put in Spring Washer. And I'm going to drag and drop the Spring Washer in. Uh, again, I'm going to take you through this because I just want you to be clear about everything that's been going on and how we've been doing it. So I'm going to double click into uh, SolidWorks and let's take a bit of a navigation around it. Uh, what I should point out as well, how I'm constructing these is how I would essentially uh, assess the assignment because there's no point in me setting you up for an ultimate failure of not really knowing exactly what it is that you need to do. So... Um, how I'm writing this is to do that. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is remember, please, for the love of God, remember, don't double-click an um, API, because you'll double-click the API, what it sees is root information. It just goes, yeah, it's very good, that, and it just doesn't know what you're wanting. So always go to Edit Macro, and I'm going to go to my spring washer and open up. <laughs> it's a spring washer, not a split washer. It's awkward. Right. So anybody that's un un unfamiliar with what I was doing, this is a quick catch up. So it's like a last time on CAD. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What I decided to do was to use a particular reference. Um, this is where I'm basing all my drawings from. This is where I'm basing everything that I've done. And this became my initial point. Now, the reason I've turned it into a comment is because what it allows me to do, I can move all the way back to originally find out what the hell I was trying to do. Because let, let's forget it. Let's, let's face it. We forget stuff. So I'm going to paste that in and then trace it back. So that is what I was basing it on. So if we look, oh, you can see there, I've got A, I've got B, and I've got T. So if I just minimize that, what I've done is try to tra trace the same thing, A, B, and T. Now, um, when we started to go through setting up the, the helix, which is, was a bit of a pain in the backside, because what we'd done, if you remember the other week, what we're doing is just spring and how the spring functioned. But with a spring washer, you've actually got a cross-sectional profile. 
And what I did is I needed to set something that would give me a relative height and pitch. So I set that as just a HP. That's all I set it to. That was me calling it that. And then the other thing to keep yourself in mind is that if you look at, uh, let's have a look. If you actually look at this, if you actually look at how this is laid out, we all know from a spring washer, uh, so if I just go spring washer, let me just quickly find a picture of one. So we've got spring washer. I mean there, if you look at these, if you look, these spring washers, they do actually have fillets on them. But I think that these are just ground down to the sharp edges, if you will. So I don't know if these are like particularly put to a certain size. Is it something that we should put as in a fixed value? I don't think so. Um, I think that all we can actually do is try and make an assumption as to what that fillet would be. So as I'm scrolling down, this was me recording new part, by the way. As I'm scrolling down, you see there I've got my fillets and I've got my H to P, which is my height to pitch. Then what we what we're discussing is technically the outer diameter could be smaller than the inner diameter. We set an initial size of the wall to one. Don't forget down here I've got my units as ever. We set the initial size to one. And then if it was too small, what we'd do is we'd just loop it back to start like that. Then from there, I decided that what if somebody put in a particular size which would make that spring washer bigger? So if we were saying that T, the thickness, got to a certain size, you'd want a particular size of fillet onto it. So this was me just predicting what they would be, which, again, is really a hit and miss. Um, here, I was trying to measure it out. I mean, the reason that's there is I changed my mind and I got rid of it. So I'm just going to delete that out because I don't need it now. I'm happy with the way that it is. Also, when you come onto here, you go inner diameter, outer diameter, you kind of go, I've forgotten what it's for. You'll notice I've started to put comments on. Comments are mint. Oh, one second. There we go. Call, uh, <laughs> comments are mint. They really support everything. So if you're going through it and um, you get to a point and you kind of go, what the hell was I trying to do? What this will do, what a comment will do is fill in what you're trying to say. So what I wanted to do here, just before we even kick off, is I'm going to even start to add some more comments in here. So I'm just going to put uh, stops. Whoops. I'm going to put stops. Um, outer being smaller than inner. And that just gives us that freedom there. Um, yeah, that just gives us that freedom. It just reminds us as to exactly what the hell was going on. Then, uh, what I'll do here is I'm just going to put... Now, I used a mid-declaration marker. We use these a little bit, just a little bit. What I want to try and use these sessions for is, let's face it, uh, boys and girls, the sodding coronavirus has really introduced some bloody issues for us all. What my aim of it now is to just try and get the best in actually try to find a benefit from this happening. And I've dawned on it that we could actually turn this into a little series of that what we're going to do is we're going to use all the notes and we're going to build an example. And as we're going through, there is loads and loads and loads of time to be able to ask questions if anything goes wrong. Um, just to fill you in as well, I, I appreciate that not everybody's actually logged on to this, but... If um, anything comes up, I am setting up a team. It's taken me a bit longer to sort out how this repository is going to work. But my idea is to make sure that you're well covered. I, I am open for uh, meetups on teams if you do need something that you particularly need to discuss. Anyway, back to the actual point. So my mid-declaration marker, so uh, mid-deck marker. Now... Uh, I mean, somebody said to me yesterday after this, they said, why are you always putting comments on? Because it reminds you, what the hell's going on? Uh, if you have done Python, if you have done C, if you have done any type of coding, you will know that comments need to be there. If you've got a good mark, you should have been putting comments on there. These, I will give you marks for. 
if you just ignore it, I'm going to actually chop bits off. So you'll know on the assignment how it does talk about there being sodding comments there. So just get them on there because it's it's easy money, you know. Uh, I'll just call that mid declaration mark ascend. Uh, I'm just going to copy that and paste there and then remove that. I mean, really, I could call that mid declaration marker two because I've not shown you where one is yet. But it just gives you an idea. It allows you to trace back as to where things are going and comments instantly catch up with what's going on. Right. So, as I said, this is me executing the case statement from yesterday. Uh, the beauty is, is if that happens, so let's just go mid declaration marker two send, get to here, and I'll just tab that along. Uh, if anybody's saying, why am I tabbing it so much? It is purely because, so it all stays in line. If it's all over the place, it, it does look messy. It looks a state, so it needs to be well done. Uh, so once we've got into it, I've gone on to top plane. I've generated um, a circle. Now this circle, what, I, what we had to decide yesterday is we needed to decide how this is going to be executed. So if we look to this original drawing, if you look, you've got A and B. We need to decide which is going to be our dominant circle that we would use. So what we decided is that the um, circle would be the inner diameter reference. Then this corner rectangle down here would connect with that and then draw uh, A to B and then draw it the same way. It's worth looking at with this because this is actually a a, a corner rectangle which then it will change um fillets all fillets have been selected and then i've uh, put in a helix and then i get to a yes and no and then you got here we've got a second mid mid marker there so one second i'm just going to put that onto there copy now when i got to the end here what i tried to do yesterday is i was trying to use start again because i thought i'll just send it back to start and when you actually look at where start sits, when it was coming back, it was trying to draw on to, it was trying to draw on to the same part. And with it not being able to draw onto the same part, it uh, made it a bit of an issue. So what we had to do is put in a secondary marker, which became up here onto new P. So that new P refers to new part, uh, which is where that is. So that's why I've done that. It's just to give you an overview as to where this is going from. If you do get chance uh, and you want to know how this was done and recording processes, please, I would, you know, I'd, I'd always promote you taking a look. So what I'm going to do is come back here and then I'm going to go on to here and then just change that to one. Just allows me to then remind myself where the hell everything was going. Change that to one and then it just tells me where things are going. Right. So, without further ado, let us run the, the good. Right, so if I run it, opens up a new part. Oh, I thought I didn't think it was going to work then. Like, of course it's going to work. Open up, opens up a new part. You'll notice there I've set some um, defaults, and then we're going to run it through. Uh, do I want to run it again? I'm going to go no. Now, don't forget the cheeky, cheeky way of doing this is so good, it must be fattening. If you look here, it's a basic if statement, and it's checking for an uppercase or a lowercase uh, character of Y. And if it doesn't get any of them, it just stops working. So people think, oh, yeah, I can put no, and it doesn't work. Well, it's actually not true. All it does is just a cheeky way of doing it. So what you see now is we've got our spring washer, our initial spring washer design. Right, so... A few things that we can now start to look to do. If we come back to here, I mean, I won't lie. One thing that makes me wonder is, you see how we've got these executes here? These executes are the same. Agreed? Agreed. So, what we could do is we could drop them lines completely. So, let's just drop them lines. So, what I'm going to do is... Sub fillet. So we got sub fillet there. 
instantly, this is me now introducing a subroutine. Um, any questions before we continue? Uh, again, if there are any questions as we're going through, is there anything where you're unsure what I've just said or why I've just said it or what was going on, please, please just uh, put a comment on Adobe Connect and I can try and go into a little bit more detail for it. Again, it's a little bit strange for an environment. Uh, this whole thing's made me a little bit nervous as far as actually delivering this. But where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make a small... Right. Um, two seconds, two seconds. Right, so um, it's a good, fair enough question. So um, one question that's been asked here is this route, this subroutine here, why is it here? So what I'll do first is I'm gonna delete that back out. So um, a subroutine allows, allows me to actually uh, simplify the code, um, to minimize the level of executions. It allows me to do an awful lot and make it so efficient now, these are best executed where there is commonalities. Now, in the notes I did yesterday, the, the live CAD class we did yesterday, what we got is we got these similarities, and these came from a sketch fillet. I would always recommend to anybody that's attempting fillets not to do three-dimensional fillets. I'm not saying that you can't, but I'm just saying that um, doing three-dimensional fillets can be tricky because you get left in a position where you must select component by array. So it's three-dimensional uh, reference to a point in space. If you can do it by a sketch fillet, you can refer to a line, and that's what we did. We plucked out the lines, and then we executed it that way. As you can see them, so let me just go back. As you can see there, We've actually got these little fillets on there. These fillets are the fillets uh, FT on the code. So if I just quickly scroll back up, we've got FT. Now I've set it to 0.2, can be smaller, can be anything. But you'll notice on the case study here, on the case statement, what I've done is I've incremented it based on what people are inputting. So I've made it bigger and bigger depending on that. Now the thing is here is we've got lots of re repeats going on, lots and lots and lots of repeats going on. So the question is, can we simplify these executions? Um, we could, because this is a single, you know, like a better word, this is a single bullet command. We could easily do that. So I, I think what I'll do just as a bit of a, a nice example is make a subroutine where I'm actually starting to put in fillet behaviors. So what I'll do is I will go sub. This is why I was writing sub. Fill it, and then enter. This now creates a subroutine. This now allows me to pass things across. So what I'll do is come up to here, and I'm going to test this. You know what it's like. You know what it's like. Get this wrong, and it just dies. You go, I have no idea what's just happened. So I'm going to paste that in. Simple change, and I can test it. If whoa, 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 whoa. If this runs... Uh, sorry, two seconds. I'm going to have to let him know. I will call him back. Uh... Panicking members of staff, that's all it is. Right. Um, so, back to the actual point. So, we got that into here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually comment out these fillets. It's a little bit of an excessive thing for using on a subroutine, but it does really show what we can do. Because you can see... Uh, so you can see here that what it's actually doing is I've taken all them out and I've just put that in. So if I just say... Uh, here, if I go 
And it is this simple. If I just say call, fill it. Right, now what the system does is it says, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about with fillets. Two seconds. Uh, there's more people logging on, that's all. So that's why I've got to pause a minute. So what it literally says is it just goes, I have no idea what the hell you are talking about with a fillet. No scuba do at all. And it wants to know uh, what it can do. So what it will naturally do is it will look to find the closest thing that relates to fillet. Uh, but don't believe me. Don't believe me. I'm actually going to show you. That'd be even more fun, right? Um, <laughs> and what I'll do, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it here. And interestingly, this actually chops uh, processing power down. And into here. So. So let's, uh, we'll break it to there. And let's just run it. Run to the normal code. Executes as normal. Builds a new part. And then we're at a pause. So now what we do is it runs in. Now on the geometry, it should be glowing like mid. Oh, that actually worked incredibly wrong. So then what it does, it calls it, jumps in, allocates to fill it. Then comes back, calls it, jumps in, allocates to fill it. Jumps in, allocates to fill it. Because it's the same command. It is the exact same command. And uh, so if I just clear that, close that, close that, right, then we just close that. Let's just take a look at what it actually generated. So you look there, it's allocated the same thing, which is good because we've been able to cut down the level of times that we're, uh, that we're executing that. So I can, by default, delete that out and delete that out. I mean, it does make you start to wonder what else can we do with this? I mean, let's face it, there is some seriously cool stuff we can do with this. We can actually um, turn this into all different types of things. What we could do, hmm, what we could do is we could turn these into variables. The issue is, is if you look, we have fillet declarations here, here, and here. And then it starts to really come away. You kind of look, you kind of go, well, do we really need to? Um, what we'll do is we may come back to that. We may come back to that. I've not really planned what I wanted to do with that. Um, it just it was just a nice example of how you can use a subroutine. Now we've done a basic of making the code jump out to do a particular job. What I'd like to do is actually build on that again and again and again and again and again because I think it's 100% worthwhile. Uh, right, so let's get to the website. Let's get to the website. Um, <laughs> so, now this is what turns into a real pain in the ass. So you see here, we've got M10. It's an M10 sizing, a uh, normal size of M10. So that really suggests that M10 to M10 to N2, for example, because they are spring washers, I will bet you any money you will get these for things like, if, if Rory was here, I'm sure he could tell me, uh, anything for like RC cars right through to uh, production cars. You will get spring washers because they're an incredibly useful bit of kit. But the trouble is, is they're just super easy to make. Hence why I've chosen this as a useful piece. So what I'm going to do is find, hang on a second, we need some M sizes. See what we got. Uh... Right, so I've just put in M, M chart sizes. What we're going to do is build it on, on him. M. Oh, no, it's come back with mail. Oh, <laughs> Uh, it has genuinely come back with human bits. Beautiful. Trying to make my life easier. That went incredibly well. Just saying. Uh, right, okay. So what we'll do is we'll go spring washer sizes. So I'm going to go spring washer sizes, chart sizes. So what it'll do is produce this. Right, so boom. Look at that. 
we look like we're actually generating something here that could be useful. Um, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice set. Right, so let's just log on and let's just check this. What I'd like to do is to first get us into a rough position of things working. Now, what I might do, just because I know it'll annoy everyone and it will really make me smile. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to copy this image. And what I'm going to do is go on to my Excel spreadsheet. Let me just see what this is. Whoops. Let me just go a new spreadsheet. So I'm going to go on my Excel spreadsheet. And what I'll do is I'm just going to paste that in. Or, or not. Just get rid of that. Right. So what I'm going to do is come back to this again. And I am just going to, I'm going to quickly type a little bit of something out here. So, um, I don't really need to do this from for myself from scratch. So I'm going to say A, B, and T. What I'm going to do is set up the basic interface across it, and then we're going to move to a bit more of a useful bit of kit. So what I mean is, if I go insert, I'm going to add it to the right here, and we'll go. Well, let's go in three to in twenty four. Gram three. M4, I'm not going to repeat everything through this bit by bit. I mean, arguably, what I could actually do is just take it up to M10. All right, I'll tell you what, let's, let's, not, let's not dick around with it. Let's go all the way up to the top. So we're in, uh, right up to M16, 18, 20. We'll stay at M20. Okay. So now, obviously, these will need to be M sizes because it's a spring washer. So we know from the original drawing that that A is our internal M sizing. Yes? Yes. I thought so. Yes, good. That is good. Um, so we've got three. <laughs> we're going to go three. We're going to go four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve. You'll notice what I'm essentially doing here is I'm trying to break it in half just because um, there's a few ways that I need to try and cheat. And the issue that I can be facing with this is how well is this going to work? So I can either try and decode characters coming in, or I can decode whatever I want to go with it. What I think I'd like to do today, it's weird is this, because it's just weird. I mean, I'm, I'm used to standing at the front of the class. It's just weird. Anyway, so um, on my B, I mean, what's the thickness on these? H mint, H hang, right. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at these D1s. These are monstrous, am I right? Yeah, they are. I thought they were. Right, so, see these D1s will be the secondary um, dimension. These will be your outside walls. Let's have a look. They, oh, look at that. Look at that. That's massive. That's what she said. Um, so, <laughs> all of its students are stood at the door. I am ignoring them. Oh, um, two seconds. Right, so... What we got now is, um, uh, right, give me two seconds, ladies and gents. I just need to quickly answer something. Um, someone's just walked in, so give me two seconds. I'll be right, right back. Like, give me, like, ten seconds even. Uh, yes, I'm here tomorrow. Okay. So um, this everything's live across the class at the minute. This is where I was, was, I was looking for you. Uh, this is MP3304. 3604. And, uh, yeah. Right, sorry, sorry, back at it. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to base it purely on what we've got on this chart. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's big, isn't it, that? We've got three mil by seven. It's, it's a biggie. So, <laughs> okay. Right, so what we're going to do is go seven, we're going to go nine, we're going to go 11, we're going to go 14. 
I, all I'm going to do is, I'm in essence, I'm building this up, and we're going to navigate our way through it. If anybody's got any input on that, by the way, and you're not sure, then please, you know, point it out. Because um, all I'm doing is I'm just pulling it straight from the website. 39. And what we got on here? So really, I mean, it's not really a spring washer I'm using, but I know that these exist. It's just, it turns out now I can't seem to bloody find them. Ah. Oh. Jules was here. He was just trying to see what was going on in the awesome class that is CAD, just saying. Right, so we know by these sizes, these are quite big. Uh, we'll presume that we're operating to a similar sort of thing. So S in this dimension here, S in this dimension. Oh, S is that. It's the particular angle set. Is it though? So oh, it's a thickness on it. So yeah, okay, we'll go with that because it is roughly what we're looking for. So this is going to build us our spring washer standard. Um, if anybody's unsure, this uh, spreadsheet I will upload. I'll do the same again. The more development that we do today, I'll do a bit of interfacing across. Um, because in essence, what I figured is we've got so much stuff we can do with this. And it is down to you if you want to log on or not. But I thought it might be nice. So 118... Oh, 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 I've got 4.5, 5. It's all good. 4, 4.5, then 5. So all I'm doing here is I'm trying to fill in the blanks as to what I've got. If you've done something similar to this, uh, then well done. It's, it is really, really all I'm really looking for. Uh, interestingly, I've put this onto here for anybody who opens the spreadsheet. I actually don't really need it. Because you know what it can be like? People can look and go, well, where's that value come from? What's that value for? What's this for? If you've got somebody, if you're working for a company and they don't want uh, some coding genius staff to come in every time they want to make a change, what they want is they want people to be able to navigate their way through. So this is a nice way of being able to do it. So somebody opens it and goes, oh, yeah, we'll add this on. Oh, we'll add this on. Right, so... Now, with this, this particular criteria, uh, there's not much as far as options go. I mean, these things themselves, uh, they need to be a particular type. So, there's a few things that we can do. We can choose where we're going to bring Excel in from. So, first things first, I'm going to save this. Um, I'm just going to save it. I'm just going to save it. I'll save it into the folder because at the end of this session, by the way, what I'll do is I'll upload this. So we'll call this uh, spring washer spec or something like that. Spring washer spec. I'm going to save that. That then brings it in. Okay. So what I'll do is bring that down and I'm going to close that. I'm just going to minimize that as well. So we get back to the code. Uh, what I'd like to do as well is I'm going to keep calling in uh, bits of the notes. So we need to do Excel interaction. What I'll do is open up my SolidWorks and I'm going to now navigate to the Excel beam. Let's navigate to the Excel beam. The beauty is with this is we're going to, we're comparing for exact values, for exact values, not for specifics. And the one thing that we know for sure when somebody puts a value in is we know for a fact that they're going to put in an M particular value. So you can indicate the way that people can do this. But for what we're going to do here, we might as well just make it nice and simple. So let's go. Um, you know, I'm to my ledger notes. I'm just opening the XLB. If anybody's unsure. Because I, I do know, I mean, the only reason I'm jumping onto that relatively quick is I do know that, oh my God, not that one. That gives you far more answers than I thought it would do. That's awkward because I've recorded it. Um, so let's go back. Let's find something else. Let's just go bolt. Oh, that's better. That's better. So this was the solution, by the way, for the bolt. But anyway, this is up on Blackboard. 
So, um, let's first take a look at how these have been Im implemented. Now, this process is dead straightforward. This, this idea, and all we're doing is we're looking at how it's been set up, and we're going to try and stay with this. So, in fact, no, I'm not going to copy that yet. Let's first concentrate on getting the Excel object in. Let's get it working. So what I'll do with this is I'm going to copy just these two lines. So let's copy that. And then I'll get across to my uh, split washer, spring washer. Still annoying me, is that? Just saying. Uh, I'm going to go up to here. And then I'm going to drop that down to there. So I'm going to execute. You see here that I've got that particular day. Now we know how this is set up. So I'm going to go dead steady with this because I want people to be aware of how these things are established. I'm going to go to book. This is just to get it working. So I'm going to uh, properties. That tells me where it's stored on the location. So I'm going to control C. I'm going to come back across to the SolidWorks system. Go down to where my get object is. And I'm going to come in to this point, just that point. So if I click V, and, oh, that's just made me realize something. Ah, silly sod. Wrong one. It's actually in here. I was looking there thinking, book one, that's not right. That's because I'm looking at the wrong one for something else. So I'm going to go properties again. And all this does is it's just an, an, ad, an added location position. So all I do now is come back in, highlight between C up to my uh, slash to the bolt, and that puts a spring washer. Next thing I need is the name, so I'm going to copy that. And then I'm just going to extend this up again, and then test. Right, and that is the first steps of establishing where it all goes. Um, I'd say run through that process, get used to that process. It can be a little pain in the ass. We need to decide how we're going to actually count through this yet, how we're going to address it and how we're going to loop through it. Interestingly, the process that we're looking at here, we're not doing a comparative. We're just seeing if it's an equal value. And if it's not an equal value, do something else, you know? Um, before I kick off, I'm um, not kick off, before I move into counting through this and getting this working and getting it into something sensible. Are there any questions? Is there anything on this that you want me to explain again? Uh, I only say just because I love doing this stuff, you know, I'm very nerdy like that, um, but it doesn't mean everybody else likes doing it. So if there's any questions, please feel free to stop me at any time, put in any comments, anything like that because um, I will stop just, just to ask partic uh, just for particular questions. You'll notice that there is a private way of asking questions as well, just in case you are curious. Okay, so I'm gonna, prog I'm gonna push on then. So we've now got that initial uh, way for interfacing here. Great little thing. So uh, gets handled for active sheet. Now we've done that and that's because I ripped that straight out. So I'll go back to the Excel beam again, not there. And you see there, I've got Excel object and SL, XLS. That will instantly tell me it needs to be declared somewhere. So, um, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. It's actually not on the list. Well, it turns out I am going to have to use this beam. Right, so I'm going to scroll back up. And I'm going to do Excel object. And I'm going to come back to split washer. And I'm going to paste that in. Uh, for this example, I don't want it to be public. Public will make it um, difficult. Uh, we will probably examine that very soon because I do want to get into using uh, user forms. And then what I'll do again is I'm going to declare uh, well, I'm not going to mess with this one. So all I'm going to do is say dim XLS uh, X 
and I want a search. So w Excel search as object. So right, we've got these particular points. Um, we do need to make sure these things are closed. Uh, if you remember, I always said this, make sure that when you open stuff, you close that stuff as well. So that's, I'm actually gonna copy all of that to remind myself. And it also means that anything that I upload after this session, you will have. So I'm gonna, I think, I think we get to the end of that sketch here when it runs through, deactivates. Let's deactivate Excel from that point and then ask, do you want to run again? Because when it runs again, if you notice, if it runs in, in again, it'll come back up to the top, come to new part, and then run back into here, and then reopen Excel. If you make mistakes and something goes wrong, it'll just loop it back, leaving Excel open. And that, for me, is, is well thought out flowing. So I've, I've got to say, so far, I definitely give myself first class. Uh... <laughs> Just think the next few weeks of, of classes are going to be like this and the amount of fun that we're going to have. Right. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a subroutine. I do want to build in more subroutine functions soon. At the minute, I'm just not sure um, how many subroutines to drop in there as of yet. We are going to do more and more. So uh, let me, what we'll do is we'll count it in. Well, we'll run it through. Now, technically, if there is something wrong here, what will happen is it'll run to the Excel object, it'll execute, try to get the object, and then the object will crash. If it does not crash and execute successfully, then we know that we're onto something good, and then we can start to have a real look of how we're going to count through the spreadsheet, how we're going to extract the value, what we're exactly testing for in the big picture of things. So let's run it. Right, so we've got a uh, keynote and automated class. Right, so that runs onto here. Now that is the big killer. Mm. So it's dropped out because Excel object is coming back as nothing. Now that will be because, oh, I tell you what it might be. If you look, I've got it down as XLS. Now, I'm sure the new format is not XLS. I think it's XLSX. Oh, yes. Joys of Microsoft, am I right? So I'm going to uh, go properties. Look at that. Look at that. Got an X on the end. Brilliant. Makes me smile every moment. Because you notice all the spreadsheets I gave you before, they were all predefined as X, uh, XLS. There was never an X on it. So if anybody had any issues with that, that's what you may be facing. So let's change that format type. Let's run it again. So we run through. We Now we know that we're getting to something executing. So let's execute it. <sighs> run through. Do you want to run again? I don't want to run again. And what it should have done, it should have opened up Excel and closed it. This is great news because what we're going to do now is we're now going to put in particular value sets. Um, this will become our equivalent of um, what will be our standard. And interestingly, I didn't know this, but interestingly, if you go on some split washer websites, they will make you bespoke split washers your walls can be variable, your walls can be changed, the thicknesses can be variable. You can even request a fillet size. And don't get me wrong, it has to be sensible, so you can't go like 10 to the minus 12 millimeters, because that's just, well, it's just bloody daft. Um, what this, what they'll allow you to do though, is really have a particular requirement. So rounding tools can be useful. Anybody who's used rounding tools, congratulations and well done, because, um, they are pretty, pretty, uh, a, a, a big pain in the arse to get working. Um, what I might do on this as well is open up some of them useful small programs that no one seems to have looked at yet. 
one or two in there that I think is going to serve me incredibly well for this. Right, so let's get to it. What I think I'm going to do, my interface to the Excel spreadsheet, let's make that a subroutine. Because what we can do is we can either have fixed or non-fixed. So what I'll do is say sub, uh, I'll call it stand. No, I better call it substandard. Substandard. <laughs> it's weird, you know, I'm sat in this lab and there's no one else in here, so I'm just clearly laughing to myself. Right, so. <laughs> so what we got is, um, I know this has caused a big issue with uh, really being able to be clear about what's going on. So what I'd like to do is copy the whole shebang, get into here, and we're going to turn this into a subroutine. Uh, oh, questions. One second. Let me just have a quick look. Oh, good. I'm glad one. I'm glad someone is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course. Uh, I thought it was going to be a good question then, but nothing. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, you remember on the, the counting procedure, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, really put this out. We're going to try and get it so that we can tune it to simply pluck out the values that we're after. It's just because you never know. And, I mean, it makes me wonder, you know, it makes me wonder whether, you see what we've got here, what if we remove that completely? Oh, yes, my friends. What if we remove that and we say, you know what? We don't even want that. <laughs> Tell you. Tell you. So rock and roll in this kind of class. So what if we then scroll back down, right? We now turn this into a standard Excel interface, if you will, or something like that. Now, this is something you must be aware of. This is where I'm getting cocky. And if you get cocky, what can lead to is this is a subroutine. So this is like a mini version of this, right? Because it's a mini version of that, what it does mean is that you're sharing actual um, variables. So you see where we've got XLH, we've got XL object. What we're going to do is come back to the top and we're going to declare these as public. What this will allow it to do is uh, relate across multiple places. So in other words, until you tell these subroutines to talk to each other, they don't really know that they exist. It's kind of like the biggest arrogant person in the world. They just don't really know it exists between the two. So you've got to tell it what to do. But what we want this to do is we want it to run and we want it to open up the Excel spreadsheet and we want it to take particular values. And what we really want to do is drag our T across. Read from that. I mean, are we going to go T? I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll take a look in just a second. Um, we've got fit. We've got column. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm just going to copy these up. Both of these I'm still going to use. It's truly because we do want to be able to stop. So if I just come up to here... Make a few more spaces, and then we're going to go paste. Now, this is only there because um, I've not filled them yet. So we're going to go dim. Fit as, an int uh, as boolean. It's just truly because then it can become the true or false declaration. Makes our life easier. So then we're going to go column, dim, as. Don't forget, this becomes a counter. Always a counter. So we're actually turning this not into a double, but an integer. So now what we've got is we've got a way of locating and saying that's not right. Stop doing that. We've also got a way of counting through. And that's what we're going to try and do here. So if I scroll back down. We get into here, um, this particular point, this here refers to a, a variable, if you remember. That's what I was testing. That's what I decided to be used against it. So I'd like to call that um, TS or ST. Um, it's just because, in fact, let's just open up the Excel spreadsheet. Two seconds, we'll open up the Excel spreadsheet. 
you see, what we're going to do is decide what's the best way of putting in. And, oh, no, in fact, I think we discussed this. Just me being me being a Wally. What we're discussing is the idea of let's take it from the user's input of an M, M value. So what we'll say is we're going to use column two. But rather than moving along, we're going to go down. And then once we've found the particular value that we're after, we're then going to extract the other two. And then it's going to build it for us. I know, right? Is that cool or is that cool? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. God bless coffee. Uh, uh, where are we? Where are we? Okay. So we're back in. We're back in. And we're back. Uh, Really, we want to start with column two, and we want to move rows, don't we? If you think about it, we're going down the row. Uh, we open it back up. We're going down the row from column two. So I suggest to stop for complication and confusion. Uh, we're going to rename column, and we're going to call that row. Then we know that whatever our variable sits as is it's going to have that variable, um, that, that count through, if you will. So let's uh, come back onto here and then let's go row. And interestingly, based on that spreadsheet, we're actually starting at two. If you look, we're starting at column two, row two. So that means that if we're going row, we need to change our first initial um, input to row. And then we change this one to two. And it's purely because we started at that. Row two, column two, but we're never moving from uh, column two. We're just starting at two. So this becomes row. Uh, what I'd like to do is, no, in fact, let's just keep going with that. I, I, I'm just conscious about different ways that I want to test against this, because if you remember, if we're going to test A, which is in essence our internal radii, uh, internal diameter, but Really, it's a radii, isn't it? If we're going to test A, what we essentially need to do is we need a comparative to test against. So what I'll say is dim SA as a double. What I'll do here is I'll go stand odd values. Or internal. So that, that's particularly in, in standard internal values. So let's get down and then let's uh, run through that process. So we now know that our test here is going to be SA. If this is relating correctly across the code, when I move the cursor, it should go up a case. If it doesn't, it means that it's not seeing it. So if I go down, it's gone up a case, which is good, because it means it's seeing what I'm asking it to do, which makes me smile an awful lot. Now, if you remember, I'm going to say while the Excel spreadsheet at row two, column two, is not equal to an empty cell, do this while loop. But the thing is, is if I don't put in a reason to stop it, so in this case fit, it will just keep executing, regardless. So even if it finds the right number, it'll just keep going because it'll always find something in the cell. So we always need that to be there. So now here, what this will do is this is uh, my, uh, this is Excel, Excel cell checker. So that's all it'll do. It's going to check that cell. And then what we're going to do is use that to compare against what the user's given. What I'll say is I say, and this is, is it greater than? So we, we then, we're being a bit like flimsy, if you will. I mean, with this, with SA, with A, because we're asking for an M value, we're just going to say, give us an M value, and then let's execute from that. So I'm going to drop that and make that equals. And then all I'm going to do here is make that an A. 
what it allows me to do now is I've now got a compare against whatever's in that Excel spreadsheet against whatever the user input is. The beauty is we can make this so if the user makes a mistake, we can send a message to him, does not exist, start again, and get it to loop all the way back to the beginning. Because you're going to get it. You're going to get some real douchebag who tries to do something in particular, and it really does mess with what you're doing. And that's a douchebag, namely me in this assignment. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, Fitch, this if statement, this if statement has been used for years. If I'm, if I'm absolutely honest, this way of dropping out um, was um, was I didn't write this originally. It was written by my lecturer, and it's such a mint way of doing it that I just couldn't see it go. So I, I've seen this this short piece of code existing for the past. 13 years and um, it's just a really really nice smooth way of doing it uh, you'll notice here as well I've got location row uh, if you remember when it runs through it will always run to the the multiple plus one and then jump back up it means once it finds its cell I need to capture what that row value was before it finished so what I do is this allows me to capture that value so well do we go row but don't worry, what we're going to do is count it anyway, because uh, we can do a physical example of this where it work out pretty min. Uh, the only thing I've not added yet is location row. Now, uh, with location row as location column, it is the same thing as what row has been defined as. So if I say dim as oh, location row as an integer, and then what we got is we've got that particular breakdown between the two. Right, um, we've almost done an hour of this. All this cab fun in an hour. So, before we crack on, any questions? Is there anything that you're unsure of? Um, I know I'm about to start counting through, and we've not technically counted through it yet. But it, it can be, until you're actually happy with what you're seeing, it can be a, a real like off putter if you will it can make you feel really awkward because you kind of go well i don't really understand and that's what i'm keen about doing sorry just drinking coffee as well um i'm not saying by the way that uh, this is the doom and the gloom of everything we are going to get a benefit of this once i get this bloody team sorted out you should be able to ring me at any points. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't really say that. You, sh you should be able to send me a message at any points, and I'll get right back to you. What I figured this would do is it removes the, the frustration of emails. So I will see it instantly. If I'm not at the PC and I've gone, I don't know, gone for my dinner or something, obviously I'll be back in about half an hour or so. But this will allow me to have direct interface with you, just so you know. Okay, so um, let's let's move in. Let's move into the next the next bit. So we've now got this. Now what we need to do is we need to, have to figure out a way to get it to move across to our substandard. <laughs> Sub substandard. Anyway, um, let's jump back up. So this is where we decide what we're going to do. How are we going to run this through? What's our particular way that we're going to do? Um, a few ways we could do it. We can ask the user, do they want to use custom values or standard values? I think what I'll do is I want to jump out with this. I do want to jump out with this. I want a bit of freedom within this as well. So what I'll perhaps do is I may create a case statement and then nest all this within it. The nesting process is literally as it sounds. So what I'm going to do is bring this down. And I'm going to say select case. Oh, no, we, we need an option in there yet. So what we'll do is we're going to ask the user for, let's get... For argument's sake, let's get a number in there. So what we'll do is we'll call this O. 
So I need to define this as a double. So let's get up here, let's get this in, and let's just call this O. Uh, just for option, you know. And it'll allow you to jump in between the two, so I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to call that an O. Uh, so I'll just tap that along. Right, so we've now got option. We've now got the option for the stand, uh, standard or not. So what we'll do is we'll make this dead simple. So what we'll say is input box. Uh, like we need to put a prompt in. Uh, please enter. Oh no. Uh, uh, do you want? Standard, stand, stand, standard spring washer or custom, uh, put them in brackets, I'll just say one. And uh, I mean, we could change this particular way of doing it but um, it just allows us to test that our procedure is gonna work. Uh, you'll notice now I'm gonna close that off and then close that out completely. And that's just gonna bring it in. So I've got a bit of freedom to go in between it. Now, this value here, this value here is gonna be interesting because what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it so that, um, it works for both sides. The thing is, is on the other side, you're going to need to be more refined. This is where you start to see that little annoying thing called user forms, which work so much better for stuff like this. So bring it back up. And then what I'll do is, for a start, we need to put in some type of option in between. So let's say I select the case. Like case O. Oh. Right. Case is one. Ah, ah. <laughs> Look at those people walking past. I wonder where the hell that belonged to. Right, so. Case is equal to one. So we've got case is equal to one. So what we do here is we're going to bring it back up. Into play. Right. Um, all of this right through needs to be tabbed past. Oh, one second. Not all of that. All of this is tabbed right through needs to be tabbed past case. So I'm going to insert a tab and insert a tab. Right, and what you'll see is, if I click exit, again, if anybody's unsure, this is called the edit tab. This is mint, absolute mint. So if I right click and then go edit, this you can do uh, multiple uh, tabbing, you can do multiple uh, comments, things like that. It's really, really useful for what you want to do. What you'll see now is we've now got one, uh, <gasps> got that mixed up instantly, brilliant. So what we'll do is um, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna actually turn that into two and then add my law one on in just a second. And I'm gonna say tab in. You know, case is equal to two uh, one. Now this is where it gets so delicious, so delicious it must be fattening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say. We're going to say, um, let's go substandard. And what we'll do is call it. We call that substandard. What it'll allow it to do is jump out when we need it and then jump back in. We'll go substandard. And I'm just going to get rid of that and say call 
And what it'll do is jump it out. So now we've got that way of, of relating straight across. Uh, there's a few things we need to do to this case statement yet to make it happy, but I think it's a good start. So what we'll do is uh, end, select. And now what we've got is a way for navigating backwards and forwards, and it's in, uh, let me just go, and it's now in this way. Now this is pretty sweet. So if I go um, move to Excel, use so this is where we need to be very careful how we're doing this. We know we have B. We know we have T. So if we don't execute this outside of here, it's obviously, obviously going to come back and go, what in the hell are you talking about? So I'm going to jump back over here. And I'm going to paste that in. And watch this. You will love this. If you follow me so far on what I've been doing and why I've been doing it, you will love how simple, simply amazing this genuinely is. Because it's mint. It really is. Um, you, re you will actually re remember this as well. So if I go copy, and then I go... Whoops, whoops, whoops. Not that, not that. Then I go... Test, and then I go test. Now you look at that. Now it doesn't seem much at the moment because what we've got to do is we're going to extract the positions where they are sitting and paste that in, paste that in. So first things first, let's check B and T. B and T in this case are Column three and column four. So column three is B, column four is T. Column three and column four. Right, so the other thing you need to be aware of is technically uh, A has not been truly established as of yet. Uh, I mean, we've put A in, we've tested A. Saying that, we have put A in. So let's run that through. Let's see if this works. So you will need to close this. If you haven't done already, make sure you close it. I think I'll just use my stepping tool. Uh, it, just allow, it just allows me to keep an eye on exactly what I'm talking about. So let's just take a snip. So I'm just going to use my snipping tool. So it just means I can close it and I don't have to worry about uh, what we're doing. So I'll close that. Uh, I'll save the changes because I can't remember what the hell I did, if there was any changes. So if we go, let's say, if we go, I don't know, 8. If we go 8, we can assume B is going to be 18. We can assume T to be 2. <laughs> Tell you what's, what's an interesting one. Uh, have I assigned FT? Because if you look, FT still remains on its own. Oh, that's, that's a swine. That is a swine. And also, these two, these two here. Tell you what, what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to remove them. Because if you remember, that's the fillet and that is uh, the height to pitch. So I'm going to remove that um, in, in, unless we can find a particular standard for that to sit in. So uh, what I'll do first is I'll run it, see what happens. And if it, if it works, let's step through and see, see how it's gone. <clears throat> ah, look at that. If I chose two, it would run through there and step that. So I almost made a, made a huge mistake there. So I'm going to cut that completely. What I'd like to do is on the final run of this code, on the bottom end before this subroutine ends, I'm going to assign my HP and FT there. So it's out the way, still executes like I want it to. Um, and here, it actually needs to be pasted here as well, to be honest. It's just because the way that I've done it is slightly, mm, it's not the best, but it could be better. Could be better. Uh, just to give myself a bit of understanding where I'm going, that allows me to break the two. Okay, so we've got that. Let's bring them back like that. And then, without further ado, let's take the big risk. So we're going to go for H, assigning B to be 18, and T to be 2. 
quite quite big, is that isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna save it. If you haven't saved it, save it because uh, if you don't if you don't save it, there will be tears and uh, it may be quite hilarious. So I'm gonna hit run. Right. So what do we do? We want to go custom. I've just realised I spelled custom like custom. So I'm gonna go two. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It doesn't seem right neither. Let me just double check that. Customs two. Oh yeah, that is right. So I actually wanted to go one. I got myself confused and I don't know why. I had a total brain melt. So I'm gonna go one, use the standard. Right, so it still asks me for the A. Now I'm gonna use H. Now really, this input box is a bit outdated, but the beauty is, is if we move to a user form, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna click H. Look at that, look at that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mic drop, Dickinson out. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm clearly confident that I've done it. Uh, so if we click no, now before I get too confident, because you never know, let's take a look at this geometry. This could be wrong. So we know that this outside here needs to be 18. Uh, is it 18? Who knows? Let's put a little bit of a ring onto there. Oh, this is so irritating. It still keeps doing that. It keeps defaulting itself to uh, meters. I don't know who else is having this problem. I'm having this problem all the time. It just defaults itself to meters. So, uh, come from the top. Straight from the top. And then let's measure the outer radii. 80, 81.72 millimeters. That's measured for the arc. Okay, so let's just try this again. So we've got top, oh, sketch, sketch. So according to this, if I went eight, milli eight millimeters on the internal, then the external should be 18. So, so let's just check the internal. Oh God, this is getting annoyed. All right, so come on to here, let's just. It's not working for me at all. I'll tell you what, let's just get onto you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, swine. Right, one second, one second. Intersecting curves, and then on there. There you go. It's more like it. So, um, I mean, yeah, if it was a measurement, how much annoying that is right now. It's... Better? I'm going on to there. Yeah. All right, just allow me. I think I'm spending way too much time doing this at the minute. So, let's have a quick look. That puts it in at eight. It arguably that brings it in at eight millimeters. So, this now suggests that this external should be 10 mil across. So I'm just gonna, again, just fudge a particular position. It's, it's only really, I just need to know if it's doing as I wanted it to. 26. That's not good. 26, that is not what it was after. That's actually, that's massively over the top. So that is not good. So it's actually finished way above. So let me just see where that's gone. See, 26 isn't on the list, and because 26 isn't on the list, it means there's something that's adding itself to it. So what we got to do is we've got to uh, navigate, try and look where this value's coming from and why this value's coming in the way it is. So I'm going to come back across and then bring it back in. Let's take a look. Um, so it runs in. We come to these particular values. We call standard. Uh, we take eight, jump back across. See here is everything's B over two, so it is bringing that correct value across. Now, I'm not sure what's happening. I don't know why these values are coming here. 
show you a little tool. It's amazing. Amazing. So I'm going to highlight all of these. I'm going to right click. Whoops. Highlight all of these. Going to right click. Add watch. Click OK. See it's appeared at the bottom. I'm going to highlight here. Right click. Uh, add watch. OK. And then what I actually want to do as well is I want to watch this. My B. Yarp. And then I want to add my T as well. There is something there that's just uh, messed with it. Uh, it's something to do with the B. But let's take a look why. Because that's what the interesting thing is here. Something's messed with it there. So let's just run it. Uh, I'll get it. Uh... Tell you what, let's run it to there. Because when it runs through, it means I can get a, a, a clear value as to what's happening. Oh, that did not so well. It's not exactly what I was after. It's, once you're in these, by the way, once we have some routines, I can click run on this, and then it will it will uh, <laughs> it will run in this small subroutine. So I've got to make sure I click into the main subroutine and hit run, or else it won't run like normal. So I want to use my standard. Uh, we're going to stay with eight because it's a good value for what we're talking about. Right, so we look down. So we've got uh, A is equal to eight. Oh, look at that. A is equal to eight. SA is equal to eight. B is equal to nothing at this point. So let's uh, F8. See there, B now becomes 18. T becomes 2. So it's dragging the values in like I wanted to. HP and everything, which is fine. Okay, so let's jump back in. Ah, look at that. Oh, look at that. <gasps> Nightmare. Look at that. Oh, my God, it's embarrassing. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so what's happened? We are in a bit of a difficult one here. We've got T, P, we've got, in fact, all of them. So, any suggestions? What do you think went wrong? Anyone? 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 So what's your initial thoughts? Um, if you look at the variables, the big thing here, Look at the Excel object. It's not passing the variables backwards and forwards. They're not completely readable. And we'd assigned B, T externally outside. So the system now goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. I actually don't care what you're talking about. So what we're going to do is, wow, it's going to be a bigger. So these we're not interested in. These we are interested in. We're going to see if we can keep them active. We want them to be active. Uh, HP and these. So we're going to make them a public declaration and see if the system will say, okay, I see them. So let's run again. Let's go. Oh, uh, let me just cancel that for a second. Come back here. Let's run again. So we run back in and we're going to go one, eight. So we stay with the eight, runs through. We still got that uh, declaration value in. Oh, still out of context. Ah, oh, look at that, it's on, on for an end. So, oh yeah, because we're still on that particular point. Okay. So that is a real pain in the peck side. Because what we've got now is we've got points where this can't be translated across. Mm. Now, um, in particular, it, this is me forgetting exactly what I was doing with this. Um, translating values across particular points can be a pain in the, in the back side. So what I will try and do here is where we've still got this standards being used, I'm going to paste them in there. And the reason I'm doing that is I want them to... 
Come on, minus five. Oh, there we go. The reason I'm doing that is I want them to be allocated afterwards and see if we can do it that way. So let's stop. Let's run again. And we'll just keep running this until we're happy with what we're getting. So now it runs in. Uh, they're disallocated, but the question is, look at that. The Excel spreadsheet, if you remember, the Excel spreadsheet is still open. We left it open. We didn't move when it was being shut down, which is good. So let's go. Right. Uh, the one thing I forgot to do again is where if we see all these, these are now not coming up because these are no longer allocated. So what I'm going to do is I've got to delete all these watches. Delete, delete, delete. And what I'm going to do again is I'm going to add all these to watch. Okay, fine. I'm just trying to be... It's just a bit of a pain in the backside, you know, adding them all in. So I'm going to add that into a watch. Your, I'm going to do the same again. Add this into a watch. Your, and in essence, just gradually build myself in. I think it's the best way forward. It, it's going to give me a lot more freedom if I can just see why it's doing it. So let's run it, and then we're in. Right, so stop, and then go. We'll go one and eight. So you see here, still empty. They need to, they're going to be empty. So let's run it. Team. T. T is coming in as two. Happy days. HP comes in as particular value that would set. FT, end of case. And um, now we have values. Right, so we're looking better, much better. So what I'm going to do is just shove that off screen for a second. Let's bring that back in. And then let's hit... Then let's hit um, run. So I'm going to run this. I'm going to stop, and then let's run. So I'm, I'm going to use my standard. Go. Then we'll stay with eight. So if you remember, we're looking. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn off my brake. What a swally. Brakes, if you remember, these brakes. I'm going to left click on the border, get rid of that brake. Let's run it again. And I'm just going to put this on screen for your own joy. Remember, that is the spreadsheet that I've been using. So I'm going to run it. So we're going to go one. We're going to stay with eight. And execute. Oh, look at that. That's not making me happy very much. That doesn't look like uh, it should. Let's just take a look. So let's go from the top. Let's go from the top. Uh, let's come across, and then we're going to go here. Here. Oh, it's really irritating. It's still been defaulted on this. Keep changing the units as well. So annoying. So, that gives me the, the particular wall thickness. That is what I was looking for. As my 9 millimeters um, wall thickness between the two. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong. If we go back to the initial spreadsheet, well, if I go back to my snippet, we know that um, it's going to be at 18. So, we know that this radii here would be 4. We know that this radii here will be nine. So that's obviously going to be the right size. I mean, talking about, I know the units are monstrously massive. So the next thing I need to check is the, the rise of T. Let's make sure T looks about right. Because uh, again, it's all right saying it, but we do need to check it, make sure it's doing what we wanted it to. So let's do smart dimension into here. And we got two. In short, happy days. Everything's running like I want it to. That's a good move forwards. Um, 
that's in, that's the very first forms of the spreadsheet really really up and running makes me nice and nice and happy that this is doing as i want it to so if i bring this back uh, granted i know there'll be many things where you're thinking yeah but yeah but and that's the idea of this assignment what you can do is um we really want to start to look to try streamlining looking at ways to stop idiots like like myself from um messing with your inputs the beauty is is that excel spreadsheet is doing what we want it to and even more beautiful is we've now got it in a subroutine so excel is only really activated unless we tell it to be activated which <laughs> which which is really good i quite like um the one thing that we've not checked the one thing that is a real pain in the back is what if somebody puts in ridiculous values so let's start up here so let's just for this let's just go 20 make sure that it can move like we want it to so i'm going to run again uh we're going to go one i uh, will use my default as 20 and then run it so this this now would be that n value if you will mistake brilliant that worked really well so let's take a look as to why now you are going to come across these again and again and again and it's going to irritate you really 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 irritate you so look at that look at that look at that, look at that. so if you look at that <coughs> <coughs> Oh, hell, I've got corona. Um, <laughs> what this will be doing is, if you look, this will flow between here all the way around to here. So what does this tell you? This tells you that we've got to come up with a, um, dare I say it, a HP fudge factor. We must have some type of fudge factor. We need to, because if you look at that as an offset, it will always need to be that one step greater. And um, so, you, so for example, if I go back, you notice here, if I go to five, anything beneath eight is probably going to be good. So, for, so let's, for this case, let's go five and make sure that my theory is correct. Correct. Back out. And we'll come back in. And wow, I've got lost so many parts on. Right, so we're going to go HP. Now, if you remember, HP was the height pitch. HP is here. So what I'm going to do is run it. And then within my HP here, what I will do is I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to have something a lot lower. So if I'm right, what it will do is still make it. So then let's go, we'll change this now to five. So we'll stay with one. Then I'm going to bring that on to five and then run it. If I'm right, this should build the spiral. It should still make the geometry. But this time, it should make it. So if I go no. Now if you remember why, this is purely because uh, there is no illegal action between this face and this face. Gotta remember, this system always, but always wants to form connections where uh, mass geometries interface with each other. So if these two touch, it tries to add them together. This is what's gonna prove to be a little bit tricky for us. So we have a particular option now. We either uh, systematically increase, so we get to a particular point and um, we increase slightly. So the trouble is, is this bend is not really defined. If we go through any type and in particular references, this this bend would never be defined. Well, I mean, arguably, is it? It might be, actually. There'll be an actual coil on it. Um, I might need to check that one. What I'll do, though, because I am keen to get something like this running, let's... Um, get back into the excel spreadsheet and put a particular a particular definition onto it so let's just minimize that minimize that minimize and then let's just open up the spring washer spec 
So what I'll do is I'm going to put on HP. If you remember, this was high pitch. Now, uh, what it was at is, I think it was four. So four, 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 four. four. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we are going to have to revisit this a little bit more. So I'll go six, 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 just as a start. Um, it just allows me to get this running. Once I know this runs, I can then start to find more specific values to match against it. So I'm going to go save, and I'm going to close that. Uh, the beauty is, is with this now, we've got HP being defined as something that comes out of the Excel spreadsheet. So let's get back into here and back onto the code. So I scroll back down and you see where it jumps out here, HP. So what we'll do is we'll bring that out. Whoops, we'll go copy. We'll go copy, we'll go paste onto here and set that to um, five. This will allow us to test. So I'll go 20. Uh, granted, at this point, this is just me now getting this running. So I'll go 1, and I'll go 20. 20 is bigger, but it allows me to really test against it. So let's test against it. <sighs> nope. So come count. let's take a look at what it gave me. I didn't come up just because I'm starting to get lots of parts up and running. Right, so see that there? That's given me a nice insight as to that this is starting to look a bit more sensible. This is actually starting to run. These Felix, <laughs> these Felix as ever are bloody monstrous. I close some of these parts. You've got to break these down. Really the millions of them. Um, again, if anybody's missing this, if anybody wanted to see this, I'm recording this and um, my CAD and simulation sessions now will be executed the same way. I am everything that you're seeing here on all the notes that we've done, but is I'm tying them all together to really get an overall picture of, of, of what it is that you're meant to do. Um, even though this is really the, the, the how it's going to be now right through until the end of well, actually, right through until the end of these classes, it's going to be this way. Right through until you submit. Uh, I'm still going to run these to get everybody up and running. Once everybody's up and running, I'll do even more depth things. Um, it's just to really support. But, yeah, anyway, back to the point. So everything's now up there. We've got that running. Everything's now looking a bit more sensible. I'm actually quite pleased with that running. Um, I'm aware of that. What time are we on? Oh, we still got some time, yeah? There's still so much a good care that we can do. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I entertain myself so much. I just think it's very funny. Right, I don't know if, if anyone can hear it knocking. Right, it's very irritating, whoever's knocking. Right, so the other thing I've not tried yet is, um, I've, I've presumed that this would be the, the, um, the standards. So let's just try the custom. So if you remember, if I go two, still goes into A. So imagine if you're asking for the N value size. So then I just go, yeah, go with 10. Brings up the diameter. And then runs into thickness, in particular standard, runs through, and it makes the part as normal. Oh, debug. Okay, right, so this has proved to be a little bit of a tricky one. So what it's actually done is it's come here and gone, I don't know what that is. You've not told me what that is. So it's, remember when we were doing it with SolidWorks, where we were deactivating, we were deleting Cosmosworks and then deactivating from the other side. We were deleting all of that. It's done the same thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this. See where we've got fit? This only works if fit is equal to true, right? So if fit is still false, we can get it to ignore it. 
Like I said, it's, it's so good, it must be fat, mate. However, if it is true, then it'll do this. So let's do that. So what I'll do is go, I come into here and go, if it is equal to true, then I'll go then. And don't forget, when any of these particular procedures that we're talking about, it's always tabbing. So I'm going to highlight, I'm going to tab it out. And what I'm interested in now, it doesn't really matter, because what I'm going to do is bring that back, bring that back across to here, and then say end. So what that does there is it just ends the if. Oh, better end if, because that's bad. Tuition. So we've got end if. Right, so let's run this again. So you see now what I'm essentially doing is I'm running this fine tune because we've done the Excel spreadsheet, but we forgot to test the normal custom one. So let's bring in these normal values and run it through. Nope. So that now ran. Okay. So then let's try running through the Excel spreadsheet. Make sure this is working because if it goes wrong, it's us with egg on us first. So go ahead, okay. Let's go 20. Run through, we're into Excel spreadsheet. We're reading from the Excel spreadsheet. We've executed from there. So now I'm going to create the, the actual process. Do I want to run again? No. Done. Everything executed, everything doing its job. Mac drop, Dickinson. <laughs> so I'm going to hit save. Right, so now we're really, really, we really are starting to get a nice, sexy bit of execution that's working here. It's doing exactly what we wanted it to. When we built the sketch, we tried to prioritize profiles that were going in there. We got the fillet straight in there. We've simplified every single process. Let's face it, that code runs sweet. And that is a good piece of stuff for us because what it means is that we can use all these things to our advantage. So let's just keep going. I know, I know it's all this awesome cat stuff. Am I right? Um, <laughs> oh, before I continue, any questions, anyone? Any, what's really weird is this. I'm sat in the lab, talking to a screen, looking at a chat function. And yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. But anyway, right. So no questions, rocking. Again, if there are any, please stop me. I honestly don't mind. I get really carried away with this. Love doing this type of stuff. It's rocking. Brilliant. Um, right, so let's scroll back to the top. And what else were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Technically, technically. In fact, let me do it. Let me show you. You'll like this. Or oh, you might not like this. You might hate this. So there's a few tackling this problem, and you're going to quite like this. Right, so if I hit run. Okay, so let's go. We're going to go for the standards. Now I'm going to become the douchebag. Hit run. Watch this. Five, four, three, two. What? What? I don't... What? What? I, what? I don't, I don't know what just happened. So if I click no, what just happened? Right. So runs in, runs into the Excel spreadsheet, tries to extract these values. It comes back and goes, okay, I've got values. I'm going to try and make it anyway. Oh, shiza. You kind of come away and go, oh, no, that is not what I was looking for. That's, oh, no. So, a few things that we can do. How can we fix this? That is the big question. This is really tricky now, because what we do is we've got to... No, I don't want to. Not now. What we've got to do is we've got to decide if it's correct or not. So, um, I've, I've seen some ways of doing this that are so good, they must be fattening. Um... I've seen some amazing ways where people have done this before. So you'll love this. Um, if this was a student, student did this a couple of years ago, and I went, oh, I never even thought of that. So let's say someone puts it in, and they do something really daft. They do something really stupid. 
uh, they come away and you go, not right. So let's force somebody to make sure that it goes in. What I'm going to do is create a nested if. So I'm going to say if B is less than or equal to zero. Then I'm going to go to start. Uh, but before we go to start, let's send the message. Let's send the user a message. <sighs> no, you idiot! Um, so I'm gonna come. <laughs> so I'm gonna come on to here, <laughs> and I'm gonna juicy that in. There we go. And I'm gonna bring that back and go end if it just drops it out. So what we'll do is test against it. Let's see if it comes out like that. But the real question is will it come out like that so what i'll do is i'll run it through and hold it at that position so let's try this again basically we don't really have a way of being able to manage this if it goes wrong so let's go oh no in fact yes we do i've just even thought of an even better way so, okay, I'm going to go my stupid value, being that, that real douchebag again. I'm going to again. And let's take a look at B. Where's it? Let's take a look at B. B comes in. It's f where? 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 So, look at that. B comes in as a weird value. No. So, why would B come in as a weird value? It's defining itself as a default. So, that didn't work. So that test procedure is incorrect. Okay, let's get down to the Excel spreadsheet. What do we know about the Excel spreadsheet? Runs in. It runs in. And um, the issue that we got, in particular what we got, is uh, as it runs in, we don't have a real way of measuring. Or do we have a way of measuring? We've already measured it. It's mint. If you look, see where we got fit. Fit is our Boolean bad boy. Um, the <laughs> Boolean bad boy. <laughs> um, the beauty is, if we have fit, what we've got is a measurable thing right there. So one thing we know is if it runs through, fit will never be made true. So I'm going to copy that. And um, let's come up to here. Go to the message box. We're not going to test B. No, 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 no. We're actually going to test fit. If fit's equal to false, then do this. Go back to start. Um, we'll send a message to the user. Uh, the, let's have a look at the M value. You have requested those. Exist. Oh, um, um, we do not make. So I think that really puts into a nice stead there. Right, so. Um, right, so let's run it again. I know we're running close to time, and I would like to. Oh, 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 something went wrong then. Something went wrong. So let's go one into washer. Right, so run onto it. Let's do let's do douchebag values, douchebag values. Run it. <laughs> so we come back again. Okay, let's go one. Let's stay with the standard values. So we've got twenty. You should now be really starting to see how these things are really put out and how they put together. It's such a nice, simple execution. As I said, it must be fattening. It's so delicious. So, um, right, so I'll close that. Right, so I, I don't want to squeeze, like, massive, massive, massive amounts in there. Um, this has been setting up an Excel spreadsheet. What we've essentially done today is we limited that input. We've put a particular value out. We've used 
<laughs> we've used an Excel spreadsheet with a subroutine and delivered it that way. We're calling from the default parts. We're using if statements. Um, I tell you what, before we, before we close this off, I'm going to show you something. This will really irritate everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the useful small programs. And um, is numeric, is numeric, er? is numeric, er? Right, check this out. So, see this? Is numeric. So, if I click run, letter, it's a letter. It's another letter. What it is, is this is a way of filtering out how, um, if you have letters or numbers. The issue that you face with this is if you are using M values, this can be tricky. What I think I'm going to do is I'd like to add um, is numeric in here at some point. What you'll notice as well is I've not even touched the um, user form yet. And I can see that a lot of you will be thinking, well, why? Why not add the user, add the user form now? It's as I said in class, and as I've said for the past few weeks, I always personally pre prefer to work um, bottom up. I find uh, you put it in user forms first is a very top down approach. Uh, what we do have though is we've now got this beautiful Excel, Excel spreadsheet working. We've done a little bit of a subroutine there. I don't really know if that was really needed, but it was nice to drop it out. This, like I said, I'm very proud that we got that out. I'm really pleased that we managed to get that in there because I think that, to be honest, works really well for what we need to do. Uh, I'm going to hit save. Again, if whoever has logged on, because I, I don't actually get to see everybody who's logged on just because I focus on this, and all I have is a little chat that appears in my window. Um, before I actually close this down, are there any questions, anything that's that's burning? Um, I, I would like to point out, <sighs> tomorrow is the last day that we are on site. Um, I suspect by now that your lecturers will have told you about that we are all being locked out of the buildings as of tomorrow night. There are some buildings that are still open, which is fine. Um, yeah, there are some buildings that are still open, which is fine. But, uh, but from what I understand from uh, other colleagues, the IC will be shut. Most of the buildings will be shut. Specialized buildings will be shut. So please, please do not leave anything behind. I will be here all day um, today and all day tomorrow. So I am open to any conversation or anything. Um, Again, I'm, this this process is not an issue. Uh, so look, the university announced that the library. Yeah, it's a good question. So, um, not reading out exactly who it was from, uh, just because it's recording. So when it comes to I absolutely know where you're coming from with that. And the university is uh, aiming to support anybody who is in. Yeah, yeah, don't. Uh, yeah, I know where you're coming from. The university is aiming to support everybody who's going to be in that difficult state. What I would suggest is whatever course you are on, go speak to your uh, course leader ASAP. In fact, as soon as I close this off, get in touch with him. Let them know that you're going to be in a difficult state and get them to support. And what this will allow you to do is uh, they should be able to, tr well, it's hard for me to say, but as far as I understand, the university is trying to introduce a lending of laptops, but I don't know until you actually get there. That was the last thing I'd heard about it. Uh, as far as the software goes, I've had it confirmed today that all the licensing has been put up to date. So SolidWorks is back up on track. Everybody can download it again. Um, so you're, you're able to download it. It is a big concern. I totally understand that. 
But again, speak to your course leader and then let's uh, let's see what we can do to support you between now and tomorrow. We need to get this sorted because you're right. The library will be shut and everything else, pretty much around the, around the entire university will be shut. I do need to really stress to you though, it is the university genuinely trying to protect you and to try and stop the coronavirus spread as much. Uh, it's not the best answer I, I totally get, but um, it's, it's a real, a real plan, real issue for that. Um, let me just save that. I am, I am still, I'm still online. So if there is any more questions, you're more than uh, happy. I'm more than happy to take anything that you're interested in. Um, second. Um, 100% if you have a code that you've been developing, send it through to me. Try and give me an insight as to what's going wrong. What I'm presently doing from my end at the moment is I'm setting up uh, the Teams deposit, the repository. The idea with that is that if you do feel better in having a face-to-face -face contact, if you have a PC that has a, uh, a webcam, I am more than happy to have a chat with you through there to assist you on whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, but yes, 100% send it through to me. Give me an insight as to what's going on. If you do want to physically show me, uh, like I say, I am, EI, I am in EIC214. Uh, I've had students dropping by all day today, and there's no reason why anybody else can't. So again, uh, I, I, hope that's, um, I hope that's answered some of your concerns. I mean, there's still going to be more concerns as we go through. It's not an easy time for any of us, and um, especially you guys. Uh, right, so I will be here. I'll be here right the minute right through till half five, maybe six o'clock. Tomorrow, I intend to be here until they kick me out of the building. It's just because it it's the final day that we can actually, you know, stay in contact. 